Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to episode one of Simple Suppers. And in the month of January, we're going to concentrate on <clears throat> some suppers that are easy to make. Uh, some will be made, one will be made in the instant pot, some can be made in the crock pot, and some are just simple suppers. Uh, tonight we're going to be making a recipe that is a takeoff of one I have found in my Newfoundland cookbook. My husband's parents are both from Newfoundland and so we have we did spend some time there beautiful beautiful country if you ever get a chance to go um, but anyway they have cookbooks and i have a couple of them and i have one that i bet not too many people out there have this is a cookbook dedicated to bologna it's a beautiful cookbook lots of pictures lots of recipes all with bologna and if you can see on the cover that bologna is not like the kind you get in a package you go to the butcher and you say you want it as big as your thumbnail and that's the thickness that they cut the bologna for you but this is um bologna is a staple or in the, at least in the olden days and probably still is a staple in newfoundland uh, they called it the poor man's steak or the Newfoundland steak because it was very plentiful. Don't forget Newfoundland is fairly isolated. And um, so anyway, bologna became a staple in the diet. And I, a friend of mine brought me this cookbook that was totally bologna. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it that way. What's well, not totally bologna? It is totally about bologna. But tonight we're not using bologna. But we're using something quite similar, and we're going to make what the Newfoundlanders call a seven-layer supper, seven-layer casserole. Now, there are many, many, many takeoffs on a seven-layer casserole, as many as there are different vegetables. Uh, and I'll explain as I go along. But um, historically, the meat, or one of the meats they would use in this casserole would be bologna. Now we're going to use kielbasa tonight, which is fairly similar, so we'll see how that works out. So I'm going to take you down, and we're going to start putting together a seven-layer casserole. You might know it as a shipwreck casserole. Be back in just a second. Okay, I'm going to start by preheating the oven to 350 degrees, and I have greased a casserole dish. This isn't as big as some may use. Um, because there's only the two of us and there'll still be a lot of leftovers. But I'm going to start with the first layer. I have the first layer is potatoes. And they were just starting to get brown, so it's a good thing I started doing this. Now, this can be, I'm going to cook this in the oven covered for about an hour. But it is very, uh, good casserole to cook right in the crock pot. Layering them the same as I'm layering here. Now I'm going to use some carrots and I've sliced them into small coins. That's two. There's three. Some sliced onion. And I have about half an onion here. If you're making a bigger recipe, obviously you double it. And I've sliced it, not chopped it. Oh, there goes my clock. <laughs> oh, well. We'll have to mute this for a second. Okay, I have three in there. Number four is... It called for half a cup of rice, but I'm using a third of a cup because I am not using as big a pan. It called for a can of peas with its liquid. I'm not a lover of canned peas, 
but I do like, I can tolerate canned green beans. So that's what we're going to use. Now this is, see, an ideal thing to put together to use up whatever vegetables are in your vegetable bin. Um, a nice uh, layer of chopped cabbage would be wonderful. A sliced cabbage would be wonderful. I'm growing cabbage, by the way, but it won't be ready until just about St. Patrick's Day. So we'll have to wait on that. So I've got potatoes, carrots, onion, rice, green beans. We need two more. So now I'll put on my kielbasa. Now, if you're using ground beef, I'm using kielbasa because we've had, let me just move over a bit. You can see what I'm doing here. Um, we've had ground beef a couple of times recently. And we like kielbasa. But now, if you're using ground beef, you want to put it in here raw. It's going to cook for an hour. And the juice will help uh, the rice and give it good flavor. I'm going to use probably half of this kielbasa. Let's see how it spreads out. I could always use a little more. Now, uh, if you put this all in the crock pot, I'd probably cook it on low for about six hours or on high for about four. It never fails. My phone is going off. But it'll go to the answering machine. And I shall call back whoever it is. I'm going to add just a little more of the kielbasa. Oh, that's me. <laughs> And they didn't want to leave a message. So you know what that is. When it gets to be dinner time, what kind of calls do we get? The kind we don't want. And that's right why I let it go to the answering machine. Now I'm going to give this a good shot of um, pepper. Not a lot of salt because the soup, I'm going to use tomato soup and it's salty. Well, I tell you what, I think I'm going to just throw it all on. No sense in having a little piece left. So anyway, if you're using uh, ground beef, you want to put it in raw. If you're using something like sausage, regular sausage, you'll want to pre-fry it a little bit to get rid of some of the grease. This is looking good. Now let me wipe my hands. That fresh brown pepper really smells peppery. I will give it a little bit of salt. Now this is kosher salt, so it's not as salty as regular sea salt, table salt. Okay, so the last, that was six. Here comes seven. And it's a can of tomato soup. I'm going to put it in here because I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. Don't forget, you are cooking rice in here. So Pour it. 
that seems to be another staple that I know my husband's mother used all the time. Let me just rinse this can out with the rest of this in. And that is tomato soup. When I would make a goulash, um, he would request it. Well, he wouldn't request it that way, but he would tell me that his mother always made it with tomato soup. Not with any kind of Italian spices or anything, but just with the soup. So there you go. Isn't that a casserole and a half? I'm going to cover it with foil. And that's going to go in a 350 degree oven for an hour. And the reason it's going in for an hour is that, I want to get this nice and tight, keep the steam up, is that the potatoes and the carrots are raw. A lot of it is not, doesn't need that much time. So that's the simple supper for tonight. I'm going to put it in in just a little while. I have brownies in there right now, so I have to wait till they come out. But I'll show you what it looks like when it comes back out of the oven. See you in a while. Okay, just came out of the oven. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. This looks extremely good bubbly good done um not gonna put it on a plate quite yet i'm gonna let it set and kind of congeal a little bit but it looks terrific let's see because we know this is good Oh well. Mm. Mm. It's a little juicy now and it will get um, less juicy as it sets. But I want to get some of the potato and the carrot. So let's just see if it's all done. It's hot. Mm. Ah, couldn't talk for a minute. It was so hot. And let it sit. So here you go. Seven layer casserole. Put whatever seven layers you like and make a great dinner. Let's see you Tuesday. Everybody play nice now. Bye.